streams. Okay, being live stream. Let me just go and see, brother, whether it's live stream in the right beautiful, powerful women page, because whether it's live stream in the right beautiful, powerful women page, because <laughs> whether it's live stream in the right beautiful, powerful women page, because <laughs> whether it's live stream in the right beautiful, powerful okay. women page, because uh -huh. All right, I think we're good. Yay! <laughs> Beautiful, powerful people of the world. Oh my gosh, you guys. I'm very extremely excited again to be live with you. It's been a long, long while that I would have a guest with me. I think it's been from April of 30 Days of Hope. <clears throat> that was the last time that I was with you with a guest. But you know... I don't just want to have a guest just because I want to be intentional for you guys to be encouraged and empowered. That's what we are about here. And so, guys, you will be so empowered, encouraged. You just I don't know how God's going to go and touch you, but you will be increased today because my dear friend, my brother, Craig Ferris is with us. Drum roll. <laughs> Say hi, Craig. Hi, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> how you been? Busy. Busy, huh? Yeah. yeah. How How about you? How are you doing? I've been traveling, traveling, <laughs> traveling, traveling. But, you know, it's been a good travel. Um, you've been busy um, taking care of the eight children. Twelve. Twelve children. I we just keep them. multiplying. <laughs> 12 children, and you're now in Texas, right? Yes, Amarillo. Amarillo. You're having fun there, huh? Jesus is good. No matter where you go, if he's present, then it works. Woohoo! Well, you know what? Um, <clears throat> you know, Craig, um, it's always good to have a refreshing um, understanding, a refreshed understanding of the things that we do daily, right? Yeah. Like you know, when we love on people, when we love on the poor, when we are whatever ministry you're doing, it's always good to have a refreshing understanding of what it is that you do and why you do things. And so today, I would like us to discuss a little bit about uh, a little bit about prophetic again, because that's what you are really called for. You are actually uh, considered as one of those that are extremely accurate as when you hear the Lord and give a prophetic word. So that being said, <clears throat> I would like for you to go and give us a refreshed understanding and definition, the simplest way we could understand what prophecy is really about, I mean, based on the word. You know what, I, I think I, I probably have a definition that most people don't work with, which is when you look at John chapter 10, it says, my sheep know my voice. Mm. you have been created and hardwired so that we hear his voice. What happens then is when we spend time with him, we hear him, and then he goes, hey, can you share what I told you with someone else? And I think that's the simplest way to just talk about the prophetic, is that I spend time with my father, and he tells me things, and he says, hey, would you be willing to repeat that? That's why it says in the Bible that everybody is actually given a gift of prophecy, isn't it? Because it is true. It's a daily thing. It's, it's almost like a routine of the Lord speaking to us, encourage, empower, build up people through the prophetic. Yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. That's okay. Did you guys get that? You have to go repeat this, you, this, this again later so you can go write down what he just said. Wow, that's a beautiful, simple way. Hearing the Lord and honey, repeat it to your brother. Repeat it to your yeah. sister. Whether they're in the what, whether they're in the government or whether they're cleaning the bathroom, you know, it's the word of God. It's for everybody. I well, when you're when you're saying it like that, when you're talking about whether they're the janitor cleaning the toilet or whether they're the president of the United States, the reality is that the father goes, That's a person who has value to me. <laughs> that's that's my kid. Mm -hmm. And so when he's asking us to repeat something, to share something, 
it's because he's going they're valuable yeah not because what they do is valuable but because they as his child are valuable Absolutely. and that's one of the things that spending time with your father changes is so i don't value somebody because of what they do I value them because of who they are mm -hmm. and that will absolutely redefine how you move in the prophetic. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's very exciting because actually the, the more intimate we become with the Lord, the more we know the Lord, the more we recognize, the more our hearts get so filled with his love, the, the clearer he is to us and actually loving others. And, you know, loving others looks like, being there for them and telling them what God is actually asking us to tell them. It's really exciting. The value, it's, it's, it's good to understand that, that the Lord values everybody. The Lord values everybody. Mm -hmm. And he always has a word for them <laughs> and encouraging, yeah. building up words for them. So everyone is encouraged by the Lord to prophesy, right? Or to, to encourage people and build them up. How did you become so bold, though? How did you become so bold? I'm sure in the beginning, it was, you know, it's still, you know, of course, when you're testing the waters, you get nervous or something like that. But how in your journey, how did you become bold and what encouraged you to really like, go for it? Uh, I would say in the natural, one of the most important things was I was surrounded by people who love me. Mm. Uh they they made room for me to make mistakes mm. and be a mess but that didn't change how they loved me and how they treated me um so that that was huge um as far as really moving with boldness and courage when when i understood that my father talked to me i went wait a minute if it's him talking i can't fail mm -hmm. so i i had this this beautiful understanding that when my father talks it never misses and i had a group of people who said we love you no matter what so that meant i could go and run into the fray and try anything at any time yeah and so i just i just positioned myself and said holy spirit if you ask me i'll run and then he asked me so i had to learn to run so uh the quickest way to my boldness was to not ask questions was to run. And that was just my immaturity then. So my questions then were, are you sure? Is this right? Yeah. And it was about what I was receiving. My questions now revolve around, is there anything more? Uh -huh. How do I say what you're saying? Uh -huh. So. Um, in the early days, to be courageous was just to move. He speaks, I move. And then with people who love me, I learned how to clean up some of the messes I made because I, I moved too quickly or I said it the best way I knew how, which was not very good. So yeah. <laughs> that's very interesting, uh, Craig, because in my experience, so I was 16, nobody knew what prophetic word was. I didn't, you know, they, I was, I was considered a, a re, the, the weirdest one possible because why would you say things like that? But then with me, what made me really so on fire and courageous uh, about the, the things that I hear about is that if God loves me and he says everything will work out, and if he's telling me to go and say some stuff, I'm like, okay, God, I'm going to do it and you clean it up for me. Because at that time, I didn't have that that community that would actually yeah. do that for me. You see, you see, guys, we are in a completely different world, right? The way God create uh, the way God created the path for Craig was different from the way God created my path. Craig had a community, I didn't. But the thing is, we are we just knew that obedience and our love for Jesus actually creates that channel wherein we can hear God so clear and so because I would rather speak to them about what I hear than be afraid of what they're going to say and not really do what my father is asking me to do so that was my that was my uh that was my uh anecdote why I have to go and say because God is more important to me my yeah. faith my love my obedience to him is more important to me than my mess or me messing up. I just believed, you know what? God told me I'm going to do it. 
But it's amazing as well that God also gives us a pathway where, and just like what Craig was saying, that there is a place where you get to, you know, be strengthened and be loved upon and protected so that you can be um, developed into where, where God wants you to go be developed into, to be able to do what he needs you to go and do. That's beautiful. Well, that, so I got an, uh, you have anything else? Mm -hmm. Well, I was just going to say, when you said that about how, um, how you were more worried about what he said in the beginning, when you're learning to prophesy, it's more about you than it is a person receiving the word. It's about him showering you with love and you building a relationship as you mature, then you realize, oh, wait a minute. It's far more about the person receiving the word mm -hmm. than it is between my relationship, because he and I are going to be friends outside of this. This is just kind of what I do. It's not who I am. Right. And so it's beautiful how he builds that season of trust. Mm. Then you go, ah, I totally can move in freedom and trust in what I hear. Now I have to realize that the person in front of me is far more important than what I realized in the beginning. Now I'm going to speak to them as a treasure, not just tell them they're a treasure. Right. Yeah. And, and I believe with all my heart that as God speaks to us, we we have this inclination in our hearts or an understanding between you and the Lord that it is actually good for that person. It's going to build that person. It's good for the person. But, you know, most of the time, you know, what comes into mind is fear of men. What are they going to say? What am I? How am I going to look at? You know, the, mm -hmm. those things. But but for me, really, it was overcome by the faith that I have in the Lord that he is faithful. He tells me I'll just do it. It doesn't matter whether you look like a fool or not, because mm -hmm. sooner or later, it's going to be for their good anyway. Yeah. Make sense? Yep. <laughs> okay, let's go for this one. For people who do not believe in prophecy right now, what would you say to them? Uh, I wouldn't argue with them. Mm -hmm. I just prophesy over them. <laughs> And then they're like, oh, that's too accurate. What's going on? Yeah. I mean, the the reality is that the, the church has done things where we're known for the things that we're against or we're known for arguing. Yeah. There is no right and wrong in the kingdom. Yeah. The kingdom is right. Absolutely. It is. It is right. So yeah. there's no there's no discussion between me and someone else about proving that it's right. Right. So in those moments. I wholeheartedly understand why someone would say the prophetic isn't real. Mm -hmm. We haven't been the light. Um, we haven't been cities on a hill. Mm -hmm. We haven't taken our position. So there's been those that have misappropriated giftings mm -hmm. and done things in inappropriate ways. So absolutely, I get it. I get why you may want to move out of pain, fear, and run. But when I begin to speak to you what the Father knows about you, it's going to change your life. And so I won't, I won't argue with anyone, but I will prophesy over. That's good. Because, you know, honestly, for the more we know the Lord, <laughs> the more we don't, we know that we don't know a lot, mm -hmm. but the more we know that we need, but the more also we understand, oh, no, it's real. And yeah. so nobody can take that away from us. That's why we become witnesses, right? There's yeah. just no way they can they can take that away from us. So there's no need to go and actually argue. You're you're right. There's no need to go and shove it in their uh, explain to them whatever it is. No, and number one is encountering, right? So for them to encounter the Lord, oh, and that breaks out breaks down every single wall possible in love. Yeah. In love. In love. Yep. For people though that have been scarred in their prophetic experience. How would you encourage them right now? Um, you know, what? one one thing is, I'll, I apologize. Mm. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I I came late to the game. Uh, if I if I would have listened earlier and moved quicker, uh, I would have liked to have been there so that you didn't get scarred. Yeah. Um, so first, I apologize. Second, I I would tell you that. Uh, we have had men and women attempt to uh, do things in the name of our father, but never represent him. Um, and so if you'll give us another chance, we have men and women that are waking up and stepping into place that their desire isn't just to do things for the kingdom, but actually be the demonstration of the kingdom. 
-hmm. And so where we, we worked really hard to build ourselves platforms before we're re working really hard to learn how to serve you well now. Right. Um, so we love you and um, give us a chance to grow up a little bit. We'll yeah. be all right. Yeah, we ask for grace. You know, all of us have, you know, there's, there's, there's also a timing we're in. Whatever it is that you have received that have scarred you, that, that is actually something that God can actually beautifully redeem. You know, and so we are, we're right now, even, you know, we're declaring that that's already redeemed anyway. And so giving us grace, giving the people grace. But I always say, every time you receive something from now on, just go and check it out with Jesus. Don't just go and receive, 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 receive. You have to go and, you know, sift it and ask the Lord, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, it's, you will have to be the one to <clears throat> be spoken over by the Lord. False prophets, brother, before we get into, because there's there's a lot of people coming on. There's a lot of people coming on now. So false, false prophets. There's a lot of definitions of false prophets. And we want to simplify that for you. You go ahead first, uh, Craig. Uh, one of the things is I'll tell you, um, just to be real honest, I don't spend a lot of time on it. Um, <laughs> Jesus said, we'll know them by their love for one another and their yeah. fruit. Mm -hmm. um, so if they're not loving other people and there's no fruit, I, okay, it doesn't matter if they're a false prophet. Uh, that, it doesn't matter to me where they are. They're, they're in a position where they need to know Jesus better. Um, but if, you, if you're really looking at it, it's somebody that works within the prophetic gifting mm -hmm. with the wrong heart. Yeah. Somebody that may be dead on accurate, but their heart is not his. Jesus said, hey, how many times, you know, they're going to come to me and say, I did great and mighty things in your name. And he's going to go, I didn't know you. Mm -hmm. um, false prophet. Um, they may have told you some very accurate stuff, but mm -hmm. false prophets tend to move with a bad heart and tend to lead you more towards them mm -hmm. or towards something else than Jesus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, false prophets are not to be feared you know, you will, you, I don't know, if you love the Lord so much, you will know whether that word actually comes from the right one. Um, at the same time, but, you know, these people are not to be feared. You know, we actually have to just also have grace because you'll never know, right? God can always use anything at any point. And even these false prophets, they they're probably have a, a wrong desire or a self-promotion. But, you know, God can always create something around it. But don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of them. And I love what he just said. You know, don't waste your time. Don't waste your time thinking about it. Just consistently be so in love with God. Sooner or later, you're going to see and know. You know, um, how about um, how did you become so accurate? Was there, you know, a lot of people, uh, Craig, uh, my dear brother, you know, not a lot of people are like, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I flow with the Holy Spirit. I just love the Lord. Like, I'm like that. I'm not the studious type. But there are people who want principles, step by step organizations, which is also a different, we all have the mind of Christ. We all are being spoken to by the Lord. We all have different language. And so we all have to give grace to each other, right? But with your way, how did you become very accurate? Uh, I read the Bible. <laughs> no, <I'm> just, <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> I just, you know, if you guys want real secrets, it's real easy. <laughs> just saying. Um, uh, I'll, I'll tell you the <laughs> one thing is don't be so serious. <laughs> I mean, that. Uh, Jesus picked a, a unique group of people to hang out with. You can't tell me Peter wasn't funny to be around. Um, that guy makes me laugh all the time and gives me hope that I'm I'm going to be okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> tell me about it. Tell seriously. me about it. So, guys, I, I I heard I heard prophets. I I've been studying the prophets for 20 years, as many as I can to dig in and and pay attention and be in a room with. And uh, almost everyone I've ever heard talk about accuracy 
said this statistic. They said, the best we can hope for is to be about 70% accurate. Mm. Now, I love the fathers who have paved the way for me, but that made me angry. Mm. I said, how could it be that we could know the creator of the universe and the best we could ever do is repeat him at 70%. Uh And so uh, I was prophesied over when I was seven years old that I'd be like Samuel and that none of my words would fall to the ground. So I took that to heart when I heard that in my, it was my late twenties when I heard that the first time that statistic. And I said, God, I won't settle for only 70%. Right. Right. I won't settle for that. That, that doesn't make us separated. I can guess almost 70% on some Mm. things. Mm. Um, So I began to study Samuel to see what did he do different? Um, What was different about Samuel than none of his words fell? Uh, one of the things was that in his early days, he worked harder on his character and his integrity mm. than he did on the prophetic. Mm. Yeah. In his early days, he was surrounded by corruption and mm. he made a decision not to follow their ways. Mm. He was raised by a father who had corrupted his sons. His sons were defiling the people, robbing from the people. And Samuel would have learned from all of these men. Right. And he said, I will not compromise. Mm. I will hold fast to that which is right and that which is true. Right. Um, and so I, I believe that one of the things that have helped me is to, to do three things, character, integrity, and my relationship is far more important than my ability to prophesy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so uh, when many people are working on their prophetic gifting, I'm, I'm spending time with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm not trying to say they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing, do what you're supposed to do. Uh-huh. But what I'm saying is in those moments when you're in a grocery store and you get to your car and you look at the receipt and they miss something character says, I'm going to get out. I'm going to go back in. Uh-huh. I'm not going to scream favor. Uh-huh. God didn't steal from them. Uh-huh. So I'm going to go back in there. I'm going to pay for it. It cost me something character and integrity cost me something. And so in those moments, I've had to get up and go back in those moments when you're talking really fast and you're telling stories with your friends and a detail isn't correct. You have to stop and go back and say, wait, hey, guys, I'm really sorry. I actually said this, but what I meant to say was this Uh that came out wrong. Uh I didn't mean to sound prideful. I need it. And so it's those little things. And Uh uh, so when people are like, what did you do to become more accurate? I, I chose to walk the path of character and integrity and to spend time with my father. Hmm. When people said, hey, we're going to go out, we're going to do all these things. And they were doing crazy, amazing things. I heard like Jesus heard, hey, I need to go be with my father. And yeah. so when they were doing fun things, I shifted and said, I'm going to stay home. Right. So uh, accuracy within the prophetic is dependent upon the choices that you're willing to make when no one's looking. Uh Uh Um, So I actually did a whole eight weeks on this um, called Samuel's Road. And in that, I walked through all those steps. The the other thing is I did practice the prophetic with no one watching. I would would ask God, what's the headline going to be on the news tomorrow? And I would write it down. And I would see. And I would go to my wife and it'd just be me and my wife. I'd say, babe, this is what I wrote down. This is where I dated it. Uh Will you watch the news today and tell me if I made it or I missed it? And so I would practice in ways that no one saw. Uh Um, And it doesn't mean you can't practice where people see. Um, Sometimes that's where we're positioned. But I got to say, there's something about moving with Holy Spirit in a place where it's just you and him. Uh And you begin to navigate anything inside of me that does not belong Uh so that he has full reign of the temple within. Uh So I think I I know you want to, I know a lot of people want to step by step, but that's as close as you're going to get right now. Um, There's all kinds of beautiful activations and people that teach those and Mm. wrote a book on it. And Mm -hmm. other people have written books on it. I, I mean, look at the show. Um, I've read almost anything that talks about prophecy. Um, this is only two of my eight bookshelves. So uh, I am voracious in learning what the prophetic is 
how people have moved in it. Um, and I, I absolutely have learned a ton. Yeah. The, the only other thing that I would say that was um, a godsend to develop accuracy was my spiritual father. Uh, Bill Holland uh, demonstrated accuracy in the workplace, unlike anyone I've ever seen. And so I used to sit in his workplace and watch him do words of knowledge, deliverance, healing, prophetic, uh -huh. and it was next level. So wow. uh, that was a, a beautiful blessing that I had. That's beautiful. That's very, very beautiful. With me, uh, my brother Craig, I would, you know, because of my love for God, I just cannot stop the burning, the burning word inside my heart that actually I just needed, it needed to come out of my mouth to the person, right? And so um, the more I did that, the more I knew, the more my faith actually increased because the more I obeyed the Lord, actually that, that made it more accurate. That, that made me more accurate. And at the same time, we know that it's not our word, but it's his word. But then it has to be based on the word. So I agree with you. The word of God has to be your lifeline. Yeah. And then um, the third one for me was like no self-promotion. It's mm. not about us. It's not about what it is that you can get out of that. Because sometimes, oh, you know, I, I'm, I'm this. I'm, I can do, I can go on. But it's God sees your heart while you're doing that. And that actually stops it. It stops a flow. Because, you know, sooner or later, Sooner or later, you would, you would just do it out of, it's going to be striving. Yeah. And that's not something that, you know, the accuracy is not coming from that. Yeah. And then it, it is a lifestyle, isn't it? Um, the more, the more you are, you know, it's, it's just basically something that you do. It's like breathing. It's like yeah. eating. It's, it's, that's who you are. That's who you are. No matter what, because God's going to talk to you every single, if, if you just allow the Holy Spirit to speak, he would speak to you even in your sleep, right? Come yeah. on. And so yeah, it's yeah. a lifestyle. It, it's not something that you have to, because when you're right, when you're in Walmart, you can't get your notes or find out where Dan McCollum is or, you know, yeah. Yeah. It's the Holy Spirit that's supposed to speak to us. But then it's the confidence. It's the confidence you have in your relationship and trust in the Lord that actually makes it more uh, accurate than anything else. Um, and the last thing for me is I try to learn, but I simplify and mm -hmm. it's always good to go and learn from everybody, but you have to go and simplify it and actually see what God, who you are in this, in your gifting, who you are in that. I mean, there will be times when I was like, oh my gosh, this is an actress. I don't want to talk to the actress. I don't want to talk to <laughs> But then you know and you know that what you're going to say is actually right. So I'm like, you know, at the end of the day. So it's more on really our walk with the Lord that makes it more accurate. Really. Yeah. You know, the, the mm -hmm. one other thing I would throw out there for people as you're prophesying, mm -hmm. one thing that did differentiate me was I started asking the question, how do I say what you just said to me? Right, right. Because that that changed the game for me because I started realizing if God's speaking to me in Spanish and I repeat to the person in front of me that speaks German something I heard in Spanish, it doesn't work. Uh -uh. And so I would I begin to understand what I see, what I hear, what I feel, what I know. I know because he and I speak the same language. Right. And now I have to speak it to someone that doesn't speak our language. Right. How do I say what I was just given? Right. And it was then that I started saying to people phrases that they had just said out of conversations okay. because I, he would tell me something. I go, that's not really how I would say that. And I'm like, are you sure that? And I've even used words that I couldn't pronounce correctly, but I could see it right. and I, I could see how it was spelled. So I would attempt to say it the best I could. And they're like, I know exactly what you're saying. You're not saying it right, but I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> um, and it was it was because I started saying, Father, what do what do I need to say? How do I need to say to these people so they understand what you're saying to them? Uh -huh. um, and that that for people that are practicing the prophetic, if you start to slow things down a bit, a, a little bit and ask that question, 
it will change and up the accuracy of what you're releasing. Yeah. And, you know, at the end of the day, um, when we start to go and talk, even I, I love how, how sometimes even like God's just going to give you one word or God's just going to give you a picture and it's really nothing, like really nothing. And then as soon as you step into your faith and obedience, then it, whoa, it opens up a door and you see all those amazing wisdom, knowledge, understanding, all those are just, are just there for us to go and actually use. And what, what it is, is that you get encouraged and empowered as, as well as a person right in front of you. It's just, it's just amazing how we can have, we, we can walk in the supernatural. I remember my husband says to me, can you just talk natural to me? I said, I can't, babe, I'm supernatural. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm supernatural. I've decided that I'm in the world, but not of the world. I'm like, oh, I'll never win with you. I was like, that's not the point. That's not the point. That's not the point. Anyway, I we want to go and say hi to every single person that is, is with us right now. Hello, everybody. Charles, Basola. There's so many. Are you are you online? Can you check that on your phone? Because uh -huh. people we're gonna give, we will encourage all of them. I think we will have to go and start with them. I think we will have to go and start very soon. There's, it's, there's a lot of them. You'll never know, right? Guys, we thank you for coming on. And um, if you would, actually, before we even, we, we even give you an encouraging word, right? I would love for my brother to first tell us, guys, he is, he is creating a community that you would want to be at. And I would love Craig to tell all of us about this because this is something that I don't know when I saw when 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 Craig and I spoke about this, it just burned in my heart. You know when Jesus says, when you know, you know when the disciple says, ah, it burned in my heart. That's why when he was speaking, it was burning in my heart. I know that the Holy Spirit is really on it. And so I would want you to go and explain to whoever is with us right now what it is actually that you're doing right now, Craig, because they need to hear. Go for it. So uh, the last four years, people have been asking us about how can we get mentored? Will you be my spiritual father? Um, and to create something for that, we it's taken us this long to come up with any idea of how to at least begin. So next week, we start a one-year program of mentorship. It's called Project Rebirth. Mm. Um, We've been having people ask us, act us, asking us, say, hey, is there any way that we can get this? We want to be prophetically trained. Right. Well, obviously, it's, it's going to be prophetic. I, I can't do something without doing that. But Project Rebirth is really about transfiguration. Mm -hmm. Second Corinthians 5, 17, if, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He's been transfigured. We have been created to be something. And most of us have been trained to be the opposite of what we were actually born to become. And so while we'll, while we'll obviously work within the realms of the prophetic, we're looking for the identification of the purpose of God within your DNA so that you step into the fullness of that, that after a year, you are unrecognizable by those that know you that you no longer are just saying, let me introduce you to my father, but you stand before people as Jesus did. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. And Jesus said, hey, I'm sending you. So we need to become those that go, if you've seen me, you've seen my father. Yeah. We need to become that encounter, that demonstration. And so uh, we're, we're taking signups to go through a year together to do this mentorship program. Um, and right now we have a limited space that's not to create hey you better sign up now that's not why it's because we have to in order to do this to talk about character and integrity you've got to be able to see it if i take a hundred people i'm not going to be able to connect with every person in the same way right so each group is going to be limited in number so that we can talk through work through some of those issues mm -hmm. so that you begin to become transfigured so we're really excited about it um I've known for a long time that this was something that we should do. 
Um, and this is the platform and the vehicle we're going to attempt to do it is going through Project Rebirth. So um, if you're interested, it's legacydreamers.org. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll, I'll let, let me write that down. <laughs> Legacy Dreamers, Legacy Dreamers. Uh-huh. Dot O-R-G. Dot O-R-G. Okay. And then right there. Yeah, and right there you can see Project Rebirth. Click on it. Um, but yeah, I when when you finally find that place where you're like, oh, this is what I'm designed for, then I know that when we engage with people, boom, you know, there, there's lots of things that we get to do in the kingdom. But then there's those moments when you go, oh, this is destiny. We've just stepped into the fullness of something that's going to be beautiful and expand. And the, the hope is that at the end of this, people will be doing their own. Yeah. Yeah. No. And one thing, one thing, you know, to, to be in a community like this, you have to know the integrity and character of the person that you are studying or learning from. It's always good to be mentored by very capable and intelligent people, but for people that knows how to love because they have been loved so well, knows how, you know, the character of the person. And, you know, I can, I can actually, I can actually say with all my heart. I mean, that's why I actually, I, told Craig, come, let's go and do this. Because honestly, we need to be loved. Guys, I need to be loved while being taught. And so this is something that's like that. He will not just let you go. You know, he would he would be there for you. And so um, Craig, um, they will just have to go and sign up very soon. So I put it in here. And, okay. Uh, you know, that would be good. All right. So we are going to um, encourage you guys with some powerful powerful exciting um words of encouragement and so we're gonna go and start um with uh do we do, it doesn't really matter right you just let it let me know if you have any word for anybody right now here thank you is it for okay wait a minute there's a question is it for both men and women it yes is. it yep. is for both men and women it would be so exciting it would be if for a year you'll be with craig Every single time. Yeah. He's fun. He is the fun. <laughs> if, if it's not fun, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it's not fun, we quit. We quit. All right. So we're just going to go and say, Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for the word of encouragement for all our brothers and sisters right now. And we just uh, we just say yes and amen. You know, I have a, I have a word first and foremost for Atem, Mila Milagros Nava. Milagros, you know, when I was actually, uh, when I was uh, um, talking to you a while ago, I saw this word milagros, and milagros it means miracles, or full of miracles, or miraculous, always miracles, so you're a woman of miracle, I mean, we, you know, miracle signs and wonders follows us, we don't chase it, they chase us. And so I just, I just declare, Ate, and de I just am in agreement with you for all the miracles that you are desiring right now for your health, miracle that this cancer is going to go away in the name of Jesus, and your, com your body will be completely in alignment with healing that Jesus paid for. He, uh, miracles for your kids in the name of Jesus miracles for your finances in the name of Jesus, miracles for your sound mind, you know, everyday sound mind, just that miracle, 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 miracle. And I'm, we are in agreement with you right now. Thank you, God, for shalom, for peace and complete healing for you in Jesus name. Yeah, I, to throw in with Milagros, I would say Psalms 91. Uh -huh. um, I feel like that, that is something that is going to present itself and manifest itself in your life. Um, for your children, I, I feel like God's saying that he's going to begin to speak to them in ways that it's clear. I feel like he, is, he has been with them, uh -huh. uh, but they haven't always recognized his voice. So I speak to your children that their eyes and ears be open. Uh -huh. to only hear the voice of the one who sits on the throne within heaven uh -huh. that Jesus himself would begin to speak to them and they would begin to see a shift in how their eyes uh how they move throughout the earth and how they begin to process the information that holy spirit is activating within them 
So I just bless each of your children. I bless your home and I speak radical encounter oh. of Holy Spirit within the room that you lay in now so that the fog over your mind would be lifted oh. and there would be clarity to recognize the goodness of a good, kind, loving Heavenly Father yeah. who is watching over you. Yeah. And also at the uh, 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power and of love and of a sound mind. Wow. Exciting. Exciting. Jesus name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Okay. So Charles Hunt. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Charles. Um, you keep saying fire. Uh, I see you actually moving uh, from fire to wind. And I feel like there is a fire that has been stoked within you that you, you have almost been consumed to the point that you say, uh, I set myself ablaze and call people to watch me burn. Mm. I feel like now that the wind is going to begin to blow so that you move into the correct position. Um, it, it's not that you're out of position, but it's, it's a shifting of time so that you begin to move into the place that you were created for. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel like what it will do is this wind will not only shift you into the correct position, but it's going to bring two things to you. One, it's going to bring people that are supposed to stand with you and move into this next season. Mm -hmm. The second thing is, is it's bringing resources. Uh, it's not just bringing finances, it's actually bringing resources for what you're about to do. And so I just bless you in the name of Jesus to be able to be correctly positioned to be able to move with the wind of the spirit and that this would be the positioning that ignites your family into the revival fire that produces reformation. Yeah. And in addition to that, that you're not just a man of word, but you're a man of action. You just don't talk, you get it done, you know? And so I, I pray for strategies for you increased in Jesus name. I have a word for Busola. Busola, I feel like the Lord just is wooing you to himself again and again. He misses you. I don't know how much uh, time or how much, uh, how much you desire for, for, for love and, and, and just peace. And God is wooing you back to himself and saying, I miss you. You just stay with me. Walk before me. And then I feel like spending time with God as your priority each day is where that revival that you need again is going to come up. So I pray that God's just going to encounter you even now with just his purest liquid love in your mindset that there's going to be a change in there. You are love in your heart. You are love in your in your soul. You are love in your spirit. You are loved. You're valuable and more important than you feel. I bless you. Uh, Lisa Hedrick. Hey, Lisa, I know we're friends, but I just kept seeing breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Um, I saw you breaking through into expansion. Uh, and I saw both internal and external expansion taking place. I feel like there's a process that you've been in that it's uh, you're, you're about to see some things within the next 90 days that you're going to begin to see uh, not just breakthrough, but breaking out that you're going to break out, um, that your voice is going to begin to carry an authority that you ha uh, had not recognized until now. It's almost like you've been practicing into that place. And now within the next 90 days, that authority is going to be activated in a way that when you speak something, it shall be done. Um, and I, I also believe that there are uh, awakenings of signs and wonders that you're to begin to see things that you have dreamed of, but they have not manifested, that now you're going to see the signs and wonders of the unseen realm invading the seen realm and causing people to declare the goodness of God in the land of the living. Wow. Yeah, and, and I hear this word for you, Isaiah 30, 29. Your ear shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. So yeah, that accuracy, that accuracy and that, that, uh, um, that uh, voice of the Lord is going to be so clear 
you're going to hear him. This is the way you go this direction. And so we just pray for increased faith for you in Jesus name. Hallelujah. And Della, for Della Bodhi, I feel like God is saying he will never fail you. <laughs> There's no way he could ever fail. There's no way he's not going to be faithful. There's no way he's ever going to leave. There's just no way, even if you want to. No, he's not going to go let you go. That's just the way it is. He will never fail you. He's, he's always going to be loving towards you. I know what it is, why, why I'm saying this to you, but I feel like God is just so in love with you that, you know, no matter what is going on, he will never, ever allow you to actually have that thought that he will ever fail you. He will fail you. He will never, ever. And so I pray that whatever it is that you see right now, that you desire right now, that it's just, it looks impossible. You know, I just pray that God's boldness in your heart just arise and that you're just going to step boldly because, well, God's never failed me. I know. And I know this is the right way for me. And so I just, I, I pray that that boldness is just going to arise in you because you know that a God who made the heaven and earth is actually for you. He's there for you. He's faithful towards you. He's, he's just loving on you right now. I bless you, Della. Jesus name. <laughs> Guys. Love you, Della. Go ahead. Um, so Sarah Chetty, um, when I saw your name, I kept seeing uh, a light around it. Um, and I, I hear the Lord saying, your name means princess, but this is the time of the establishment of you as a queen. Ooh, uh, that's this is good. the time where you begin to move into the place where you recognize not only his power, that moves within you, but how to operate according to the authority he's given you, mm -hmm. that you're going to begin to marry power and authority and to begin to walk into places uh, to see transformation, that you are to be one. It, it's interesting because you have uh, the grace of an evangelist on you. Uh, there is a grace on you to gather people and see them oh. move into the place of fulfillment. And so I just release you into authority that those doors that have been shut, that they you're not waiting for the key of David. You're waiting for your voice to be activated with authority. So it's not favor that's going to open those doors. It's you and your authority making a decree oh. that the doors will open. Uh, and I feel like there's two things specifically. One is the door to what you were created to do is waiting for you to speak to it. There's also financial breakthrough that you're to speak to and begin to declare to creation itself, I have arrived. You have grown for the manifest sons and daughters to identify themselves, and I am identifying myself now. And I believe that everything will begin to respond to you in that moment, and you'll begin to see the things that are not lining up, line up with who you are and what the Father has decreed over you. So bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Ella Ware, is that your name? Ella Ware, that's a very interesting name. Ella, I, the Lord is saying his timing is perfect. His timing is so perfect that you don't need to actually strive uh, thinking that, oh, I, I must, I have to, I, I, you know, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. The Lord's timing is perfect for you. So there is, I declare this certain peace, shalom, to come in your central nervous system right now, <laughs> pierce it through, Lord, so that that peace is going to calm everything down and, and you will see, wow, God, yes, your timing is perfect. I'll wait on that. But at the same time, this expectation, you see, when you're waiting too long, sometimes your expectation gets into a negative level. And so I, I feel like God is saying, my timing is perfect, yes, but your expectation has to go in the standard of God being faithful, right? Sometimes our expectation, oh, maybe, maybe not. No, expect, expect, just like what my brother was saying, there are times when you just have to go and declare, but this time you expect the good things and the good goodness of the Lord. You expect from the goodness of the Lord. Don't expect from all those past that this has happened to you that has been so frustrating. Now, 
now okay today right now we're standing with you we're like you know what all those fears all those things that we think oh god's not gonna go and do it for me no he's gonna do it he's gonna do it but he's perfect timing in his perfect timing so i just bless you with peace in waiting and walking in your journey right now in jesus name wow huh. uh, well i love you ella just know that you're amazing um sue me sue me her um i feel like i'm supposed to know you um so if i do i apologize um but I, there, there's an awakening of the prophetic within you to go to a new level. Um, mm -hmm. There is, there is a, uh, an ability for you to begin to see doors open into speaking to influencers. Um, and okay. what I see is those that are making decisions uh, have long awaited solutions. And you're going to arrive with the word of wisdom, with a word of counsel, and with prophetic insight into what is going to be produced as they move according to the mm. word of wisdom and the word of counsel. Mm. Uh, there is an amazing, powerful um, presence of Holy Spirit that is looking to be released through you mm. um, into places of, wow, it's really unique that there are miracles and healings that are to take place. Um, you are to move with incredible power seeing uh, miracles that people have not seen before or have not seen in generations. Um, it's very similar, if I may, I'm going to correlate it with, uh, it's very similar with Catherine Kuhlman and William Branham. Uh, there are things that you will move in that are similar to both of those where you will see things that people have not seen. But as with Catherine Kuhlman, you're going to have a relationship with Holy Spirit that is unique that yes. draws people to you. Uh, and with William Branham, you will work with the unseen realm, with the angelic realm, uh, to see things take place that wouldn't take place in any other way. Um, so I just bless you, Sumi. Amen. Amen. That's good. Yay, Sumi. I agree in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. There's this lady... Uh, Oh, okay, I got a word for Jacqueline, Jacqueline Kiocho. Jacqueline, I feel like the joy of the Lord is your strength. I do not know what's right in front of you, but you can laugh at it. <laughs> because Jesus paid for that. You know, anything that's like almost like a big, the biggest mountain right in front of you can laugh at it. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord has been given to you complete measure, in complete measure. And I feel like most of the time um, there are, you know, we we go into this uh, life journey where and we, we feel like it's, oh, it's, it's so, it's discouraging. But actually you, I just, I don't know, you're a woman that can actually contain and 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 um and carry joy so i just i i me too i love joy i love the bubbling joy of jesus and so i am praying right now joy 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 to you like that joy that will actually like just break down everything right in front of you that joy meaning well i believe the lord has done this for me I will just have this amazing expectations to the Lord. And I have this joy of the Lord in me that cannot be rubbed off with whatever situation I'm at right now. It's not going to rub you off. You know, and also I, I hear this. It doesn't change anything if we actually think about it too much. It doesn't change anything. So might as well. You know what? I exchanged this for the joy of the Lord. I don't know. I feel like the season of joy. It's a season of joy. And I am encouraging you. I, I We step into that right now with you. Um, joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord doesn't say like you ha, 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 all the time, right? But the joy is strength and hope and peace and the Holy Spirit. So I just, I bless you. Wow. Right now, just 
Embrace her, Lord. Consume her, Lord, with joy in Jesus' name. You know, my brother Craig, I always say, whatever it is that's being released every time we give a prophetic word and whoever, whoever feels like they want that word, take it as well. Take it yeah. for yourself. This is being released right now and the word of the Lord doesn't go, go void and it's not empty. So take it for yourself. Whatever it is that you hear, even if it's not, you felt like you're, it's not your name, take it, take it for yourself as well. I take the, all these in Jesus' name, okay? Go for it. Uh, Cherry Minas, uh, there is an invitation to move into a place of new intimacy uh, to begin to recognize how much he loves you. Um, there, are, there are things that I feel like he is going to the depths and core of who you are to awaken places uh, within you in the depths of your DNA that you've not even recognized yet. Um, but I, I also feel like it's an invitation in this place of intimacy um, that there is a place that he's asking, will you dance with me? Mm -hmm. um, and then it's, it's almost like there is a progression that he's saying, will you dance with me? Will you dine with me? And will you walk with me? Mm -hmm. And so I, I really feel like this, this place of intimacy that he's trying to bring you into will be the place that you begin to walk hand in hand in the field. Oh, yeah. Uh, that you begin to recognize what it was for Enoch to move with him into the place that you're so enraptured by him that there's no differentiation between the seen and the unseen. Um, and so I just bless you with the ability to not be worried about time, oh. that you would step into the fullness of what he's releasing to you so that you would use 30 seconds and it would seem as if it were 30 years with him. Oh. That you would use five hours with him and it will seem as though you were only there for a minute. Um, and so I just bless you with the ability to move into the unseen realms and places of intimacy. Wow. Amen. Um, I have a word for you, Manel. You are stronger than what you think. <laughs> you are stronger than what you think. Um, in Habakkuk 3.19, the Lord is my strength, my source of courage, my invisible army. He has made my feet steady and sure, steady and sure. And I, I, I really, truly, I really, truly feel like we need to encourage you right now. You are stronger than what you feel. You are more than a conqueror. You see, you can conquer so many things, but you're more than that even. And so I'm just declaring, decreeing that in your spirit, you agree with the Lord that you are stronger than what you feel. Sometimes, you know, our, our emotions actually lie to us. But I don't know. I just feel like um, you are such a, you're such a pillar and a strong person that God needs you to believe inside of you that you're stronger than what you are now and so I just pray in Jesus name that the Holy Spirit will just um, speak to your soul and your spirit right now and whisper even in just whisper you are stronger than what you feel I don't know I, I have to go and stop there oh Jesus name yeah that was good yeah um, Melinda Legay. <laughs> hey, Melinda. Um, this morning, I, I know you jumped on and I saw you put something in the comments about going to be with the third year students. Um, when, when you said that there was something that awoken inside me. And then when I saw your name tonight, I went, ah, the mother's heart. Uh, I want to speak that your mother's heart is the heart that has the capacity for a nation. Uh -huh. uh, that as you allow yourself to wrap around a nation, multiple nations will open to you. Uh -huh. um, there is within you the ability to communicate effectively to people on how to mother properly. Right. I believe that, that revelation is going to awaken in you. Um, and I believe that you're in a time 
where there's really, uh, it's about the next 24 months where you begin to develop language around mothering uh, <laughs> that will help people begin to understand not just mothering your child, not just mothering your church, but mothering your city, mm -hmm. mothering your state, mothering mm -hmm. a nation. Mm -hmm. And I believe that you're going to have the language around each of those to talk about what it is to mother your city. Wow. Um, and I believe that each of those will be broken into different categories. Um, mm -hmm. And so we won't go into that for time's sake, but I think there's multiple ways that you're going to have a revelation in what it is to become a mother for multiple ways of uh, geographical locations. Right, right. That's beautiful. I agree. I have a word for Chris Fayarme. I to Chris. I feel like there's this word that's uh, there's a there, there's a phrase best year ever. I know we're in the middle. We're almost at the end of the year. But I feel like God has redeemed this, ha, is, is redeeming this almost end of the year as your as your best year ever. And I just say yes and amen for, you know, that it will prolong, right? But I feel like God is um, rewarding you. It's, it's, it's almost like a year of reward for all the sacrifices that you have given. It's, you know, God is a God of reward. You know, he's a rewarder. He, 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 he's so generous and so loving that he loves to give gifts. And so I feel like this year is, is, is somehow the best year for you. So I'm just saying that your eyes will see small things, big things that God is giving you as his gift to you. Because sometimes even if God has been giving us, lavishing on us, sometimes we don't see it because we're expecting different things, right? But I feel like, this year, this even this end of the year that you have is the best ever for you. And so God opened her eyes and help her mind uh, to understand and help her heart to receive all these amazing surprises that you have for her this coming and this this from today, from today in Jesus name. Oh, I'm excited for you. I receive that too. <laughs> I love that. Open our eyes to see the goodness of the Lord. Ah, amen. Woo, that's exciting. That is exciting. That is exciting. Wow. Hallelujah. Okay. All right. Hmm. Okay, Ate Marlene, I am in agreement with you for your daughter, Trisha, and it's Psalm 1611 for her. God, this is our prayer together that God show her the path of life. In your presence, God, there's full and fullness of joy. Lord, I, we are in agreement for a mother's heart, for a mother's cry that let your presence actually like fill her up, Lord, so that she will understand that hope and joy. God, show her the path of life. Show her the path of life. And may she receive that. May she receive, may she receive the love that you have for her, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And, um, and Ate Marlene, I, I feel like, you know, um, <laughs> God has given you uh, one, two, three, four keys. There's a ring of keys. And I saw four keys that you have. And so um, you're a woman of gift. You are a woman of tools. You're a woman of uh, wisdom. And so I feel like there's this four different tools that God has given you, four different keys that God has given you that you will use for this season. It's almost like, um, you know, when there's a door or uh, when there are doors that are locked, you can't really enjoy what's inside there. And so I feel like you are going to open four doors. I don't know for who, but you're going to open those doors so that people get to enjoy what it is that God has for them. And so I just pray that even in your dreams, God's going to actually show you who these people are, what the situations are. And that, so that you're 
four keys are not wasted in Jesus' name. No, no worries about it, Ate. I am so sure God's going to go and bring you these people in your life. Lord, wow, that you have the opportunity to open doors for them so that they get to enjoy what God has for them in, in wherever, where, whatever situation that is in Jesus' name. Yeah, I know, right? Okay, guys, um, it's 434, and I am going to, um, we're going to start to wrap up a little bit, you know, um, we're probably going to go and, you know, give maybe four, six more people. I, I want to honor your time, Craig, um, unless you come back tomorrow. I'm kidding. <laughs> Hey, you, never know. you never know. <laughs> yeah, you never know. We never know, right? And so, guys, um, first and foremost, before anything else, we want you to go and check out legacydreams.org. So see what it is that, that is required of that so that you'll be able to go and join in. But I also want to honor my brother Craig for coming all, all over and giving all of us a, an encouraging word. And um, yeah, we we have a few more people in here that we can go and encourage. Uh, maybe two more for you and two more for me. And then we, you guys, there's more to this. We're going to be doing this a lot, sometimes with Craig, sometimes with other people. So Beautiful Powerful Women does this. <laughs> it's a platform where we can go and love you and encourage you and bless you. Okay. So uh, you have any any other word for anyone? anyone? I, got, I got one more. Okay, which is ahead. Debbie Lim. Okay. Uh, Debbie, when I saw your name, I saw Deborah, and then I saw Ruth. And I felt like I was to remind you to read the story of Deborah and then go read the story of Ruth. Um, there is within you the ability uh, to move with authority to bring about justice. Um, but what I see is that it's not a natural thing that you're not moving into positions to decree justice but it's through your prayer that you're going to begin to understand what it is to pray with authority to see things shift um the other thing is is that there is a a beauty and a sweetness to you that draws people into the kingdom uh mm -hmm. that you're not preaching a gospel that says i want to save you from something but that you're preaching a gospel of you're being saved into something that you're being brought into a family that you're being brought into your correct position as a daughter and son. And I see you beginning to move in a way that where before there may have been a shyness, I see a boldness coming yeah. on you that begins to change the atmosphere of every room that you step in. Uh, and I, I see following you uh, beautiful miracles. Um, and it's, it's something where I see children following you everywhere you go. Um, I believe there's a grace on you to see children set free, um, brought into the kingdom. Um, and I believe that you're going to use both spiritual and natural hands to do that. Um, that there's even something around, uh, I believe it's in the next few years, you'll begin to, if you're not doing it now, move with sex trafficking, beginning to see uh, how you work within that realm to see children rescued. Um, and it's an incredible thing that you won't just see them rescued, but you'll see them restored. Um, and so I just bless you with that, Debbie, in Jesus' name. Okay. Uh, okay. I have another word for, for someone, but before I say that, um, October, I know, on the 30th of August, I will have also Leif Hetland here. So if you have not received any word from us, after Papa Leif Hetland's time, I'll be able to go and give you uh, more encouragement into that, okay? Uh, just in case you don't get anything right now. I just wanna thank everybody for being here, but there's one more word for Cecilia, Cecilia and Harry Net, actually for the both of you. God loves you more than you could ever comprehend. Oh. God loves you more than you could ever comprehend. Mm. Oh, I like that. You just have to receive it. You just have to receive and say, yes, Lord. I receive that love that I could ever not comprehend. The height, the depth, the width, the length. 
just open your heart and say, yes, God, do not, do not block it with what you see. Just open your heart to it right now in Jesus name. And so guys, the Bible says, come to me who are weary, right? And heavily laden. I will give you rest, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. That is what we're going to go and, you know, um, give to you right now as an encouragement for everybody. Um, for those who have not received um, any word, guys, I, I'll see you on the 30th of August. Hopefully you guys can join Papa Leif and I. But right now, I want to thank, uh, thank you, brother. This is such a refreshing time with you. That's always fun to be with you anyway. <laughs> Well, thank you. I don't know about you, but you have to go and join this. I mean, really. I mean, being with Greg every time, that's fun. <laughs> but okay, and I'll see you guys um very soon. I'll see you on the 30th. But if if you want, if you've been really blessed by beautiful, powerful women, right, Craig? You know, for us to actually go move forward, go, go to the ends of the earth, we encourage you to partner with us. I'm gonna be very bold now and letting you have the opportunity to be doing what we're doing by partnering with us. And so you can go to beautifulpowerfulwomen.com so that you can actually partner with us. It doesn't really matter um, whatever partnership you would want to go and give, but it's good. We've been going around the world with this. And so thank you so much for being with us again. Craig, um, I would love for you to go and just give us an impartation and we're going to close on that one. Second. So, Father, we thank you for every person that's been with us during this time. We thank you for those that will see a replay. Father, we ask that there would be an impartation of hunger. Hmm. The ability to be hungry for more of you. Yes. That they would, they would have the insatiable hunger. Yes. Of one that cannot get enough of you. That they would begin to understand the ability to lay down in love for you and so father we thank you for each and every one of them we ask for the ability to see the ability to hear the ability to feel the ability to know and in each area that they would actually be able to do each of those things with understanding Amen. and so we bless them with that we yes. bless them with encounters we bless them with dreams and we ask for prophetic fulfillment to mark their daily life Yes. And so we bless them now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Yay! I will miss everybody already. And I thank you, my <laughs> dear brother. I wish I could see you again and embrace you and your big, beautiful family. <laughs> Literally. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Literally. Say hi to everybody for me. I and will. I'll see you guys again sometime. Thank you for joining us. This is Ruth Cube Catener. Yay! and Mr. Craig Farris. Thank you so much. Bless you, bless you, bless you. Keep in touch. Mwah, 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 mwah. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>